All right, guys, we're going to start in one minute. Yep, use the question in the comments. Use it, and, uh, and I'm happy to answer them. Adi wants to do Via Regina, an oldie but goodie. So, all right, guys, it's 10 o'clock. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a little bit of a preview of why I do this, um, and, and then I'll start the full presentation. So I've been involved in the sales of about 50 different high-rise buildings in, in Miami, and, I, and I'm familiar with a lot of the people that are signed on to, uh, to the web right now. And when I would do the pricing for these buildings, I have to do a stacking plan. And when I do a stacking plan, I need to see the building per lines. I need to see, obviously, the, the higher floors on the top. And I design and I draw the building in Excel just as, as if I was looking at the building. And so that same thought process of how we price buildings from the beginning is what I do when I want to do a rental or a sale analysis of any building. Because you could do it for rentals and you could do it for sales. So I'll give you an example. I have a client that was buying multiple units in a building, right? So I did this stacking plan because you want to analyze what units he should buy and at what price he should start making the offers at. So when you do this exercise, you're going to be able to print this out for your client besides emailing it to them, right? So here's one building that I did and I printed it out in color for them. And so this is basically the whole entire building and you'll be able to do this by the end of this class, by the way. I, I, I put a site plan image of the building in the bottom right there, as you can see. And then I basically put an Excel and I drew the Excel of the whole entire building as the image of the building and color coordinated by what's available, what's not available, what's sold and whatnot. And so this is exactly what I'm going to teach you guys how to do right now for any building that you want to do that is currently on the market. Obviously you can't do it for a pre-construction building if you don't have the pricing, but you could do it for any building that's on the market. Okay. So how do I do this? Um, I, I go on to, I'm going to start sharing my screen right now. Give me one second. Share a screen. All right, guys, everybody could see my screen. I'm, I'm guessing. So I go into the MLS and uh, when I'm in the MLS, I put in here, whatever address I want to search. So as an example, I'm going to do a building uh, Milecento on Brickle. The reason why I'm doing Milecento is because I did a search, uh, for the last uh, 12 months and they had a lot of activities in sales, relatively speaking. So it would be good to see it on a chart. So I'm going to go 1100 for the street address. I'm going to type in Miami asterisk Miami. I'm going to send you guys, whoever sends me afterwards, uh, their contact information. I'm happy to send them over, uh, this video so that you can see it in a little slower. So under active, I put active, obviously I check off active. I put in closed sales. I like to put 400 days um, just because I like to round up from 365. I'll click on pending and that's typically what I show what I do when I'm doing this. I put active close sales for 400 days and pendings. And then I run the search. And I got 85 listings that are between active close sales and pending, right? Now, one of the key things that you want to do is set up however it is that you like to see your data. I have a specific one that I set up for myself, that I see active. I see the percentage change of the building uh, per listing. And that you know how to do when you go and edit your column section, right? So I also particularly, I like to have, you know, who's selling it, what company, what agent, their phone number, their emails, and also who sold them. I like to have that on my chart. I'm not going to use that for the, for the Excel that I'm going to do, but I, that's what I use basically for almost everything. So now this is the key. I hit, uh, select all those units. And then I go to the bottom and I export down here in the bottom, you hit the export button and then I hit export again. That's going to download all that data into Excel, which is, the best thing that you could possibly do to do one of these comp analysis. So it drops it in Excel and it looks like this, right? So you're like, ah, this doesn't look so good. And this is where you have to have a little bit of Excel skills just to beautify this thing. So I click on the top left 
and then I double click between the A and the B. You see how the mouse changes when I go between the A and the B? When it does that, if you double click, it will justify all the cells to make it all fit. Then I will, let me move this because it's blocking. Then I'll center and center. Many times when you're doing these um, searches, everybody puts the names of the buildings differently. So just to unify, I click on one of them. I double click on the bottom right. And as you can see, it just copies everything straight down. And then I start deleting stuff that I don't need for this particular uh, exercise. I want to keep the information that I want is I want to know the status. I want to know the building name. I want to know the unit number. Since it's all the same building, I'm going to delete the address because I already have the unit number. I don't need that. And I do want the bed and bath count. And I want the square footage of the living area. So notice something guys, in this particular building, there's only a few people who didn't put the, forgot to put the square footage in the living area. But in many buildings, they do this a lot. People definitely forget. When I'm doing my searches, I'm not gonna use this data, but I like to see days on the market, cumulative days on the market. Maintenance, a lot of people, as you can see, says zero. They forget to put in the maintenance as agents. But I'm gonna delete all this information because I don't need it. All right, and I am going to also click on view and freeze planes so that when I scroll up or to the side, all the, my title stays the same. So now I click on sort and I click on sort by status. And here I color coordinate. So I take the actives, I highlight them, and I put them to any color, any particular color, it doesn't matter. Then I take the close sales, which actually, let's make the close sales green, because green is for money. Pending. I'll make pending red and I will make active blue. Now here is, I'm gonna take off original list price. All right guys, so here is a key element when I'm doing this Excel of what is extremely important to do. In the MLS, Typically, you don't have the line. You can't sort by line on the MLS. At least, I don't know how to do it. And this is one of the most crucial things when you're doing these charts. I add a column next to the unit number. And I call that column my line column. And this is the trick. This is the formula trick of how to get the line based on the unit number that's next to you. So you type in... Um, equals, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I think it's right, equals right, close parentheses, hit the one below, uh, the one next to it, comma two, and close parentheses. I'm gonna do that again, and I'm gonna make the screen a little bit larger so you guys could see it a little bit better, what, I'm, what I just did. In order to come up with the line, this is the formula to basically take the number that's next to you and take the last two numbers of that number and move it over to the next column. So I'm gonna type equals, right, open parentheses, click the cell next to me that I want, comma two for the last two numbers, close parentheses. That's gonna tell me that 2601 is an 01 line. Now, if I take that and I click on the bottom right and I double click it, it's gonna copy that same thing all the way down for all the units. So now I have a chart that basically shows me everything by line. Now this is what I do next. And this is the fun one for me. I hit sort and then I hit sort by line and then I hit sort, add another category for sorting. 
and I hit sort by unit number and I go largest to smallest because I like to see the, the higher units on the top and the lower units on the bottom, right? And I hit okay and then it's gonna say consider all these things as numbers. I say yes, bingo. So now this is what this did. This gave me now every line so I'm gonna highlight for you here, like for instance, right now this 01 line, right? And I'm gonna put a box around it. And I'm gonna get this 02 line, I'm gonna put a box around that. I'm gonna get this 03 line and I'm gonna put a box around that. And now check this out how cool. This is like the perfect way to analyze the building. Now hence, obviously you have to go into these links to see a little more detail because if a unit has hypothetically speaking to be extreme carpet floors and another unit has marble floors there's obviously you have to skew for that value of a difference but to get a big picture of a building this is an amazing way of doing it so for instance here you have the 01 lines and you can see that in the last 400 days there was only 101 that sold which is 501 and it sold for three hundred and eighty thousand dollars the one above is 1001 and it's listing for 470. If you go to the 02 line, you notice that two 02s sold. And so hypothetically speaking, if you're gonna make an offer on 3402, right? 3102 is currently, currently sold for 350,000 and 3402 is on the market for 459,000. So I don't know how that strike got there, but. So this is basically the way that I do it. Now, there's something else that you could also do is that when you're sorting by, uh, by status, uh, when you're sorting by status, you could take all the solds Highlight all the solds, copy paste, and move it to the list side. And now you can delete all the sold columns and then make this title active and sold. And then when I sort again, by the line and then again by the unit number largest to smallest and i hit okay this is what happens now it looks even nicer because you have the line and you have right above and below the list price what the unit sold for of that particular one that sold so now if I'm looking at, for instance, the 03 line, I see in green the prices that each one of those sold for and in blue what they're available on the market for. Now, if you wanna go above and beyond even to this, there's somebody on that is not muted and I'm gonna mute everybody again. All right, so if you wanna go above and beyond even to this, you could add basically go into Google, type in Google as an example, Media Cento site plan. Look at the site plans here. And then come over and insert. the image of that site plan. Onto the Excel. And now I could see that, for instance, the 01, the 11 and the 10 are on South Miami Avenue. So when you come over here, you know that this 01 line, where it's at, where the views are. And then if you wanted to, you could 
basically copy and paste and organize your Excel into the format of the building. So I'm gonna stop sharing this for a second just so you can see what I'm talking about. So again, you take that Excel, and this is an example that I was showing earlier that I did for a client. I basically took that Excel and I formatted it in the shape of the building. So that when you provide this, if somebody's buying bulk units or if somebody wants to do a strict, you know, serious analysis on a building, you could do this for them, print it out for them and show up to their office with this. And it's pretty impressive because here you have, you put the picture of the site plan in the bottom, you organize the Excel to mirror basically what the, what the building looks like. And it's uh, extremely impressive to take this to somebody um, to see. So, if somebody has a question on the chat, I'm happy to do this for another building. Somebody said, hey, somebody had picked Paramount before. You could unmute yourself if you wanna ask a question. I'm happy to answer it and, um, and go over this again and do it for another building if you wanna stick around to watch it for another building. Anybody wanna unmute and ask a question? Yes, please. Yes. You can uh, we do another one, please? Another yep. building? Yep. Yeah, so we're going to ask the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm right, happy to you. do another building uh, for you guys. Um, somebody had mentioned Paramount. Could somebody give me the address? Yeah, it would be nice. Okay. All right, let's do it. I have a question, Andres. Also, how would you work uh, in a building like Porch? So, a, a building like uh, Porch Tower, I actually did it. Uh, I did the the building Porsche Tower. Um, I, I did that exact sheet for Porsche Tower. Uh, and it works very easily because what you, you just need to know a little bit more about the building. So when you do Porsche Tower, as an example, I took the site plan and not only did I take the site plan, but I took a picture of the building and I put it on the Excel. I put a picture of the building on the Excel, the ocean side and the street side. And I even labeled it with the unit numbers and where the break was in the building. And so, one of the things that you could do is, you know that there's model breaks, right? So you know that specifically from floor whatever to 15, I don't know what the numbers are, but whatever to whatever is this type of model and, and from whatever, whatever is another type of model. And you can break it up as specific as you want. The more you know about the building, the better you can make the Excel sheet, right? Because if, if you, especially, you know, if you worked on Porsche, then you have all that data. Um, so it's easy for you to be able to do. Is that, did I answer your question or? Yeah, what, what happens is that it's, it's, it, every line it has like a, it, it goes from floor to floor, it's a different floor plan. So it gets very confusing. It does, but it is even more confusing if you don't do this, right? Because it's you, very- You have to do like a, the same model, um, the same model on the same line. I mean like four times because yeah, I got it. I got right. it. You basically just reformat it and basically put in the square footages. And by the way, it pops out really quick because if you sort then by square footages and then you highlight those, everything that has the same square footage, a particular color, then when you resort by line, all those units that are the same square footage will automatically pop out in color. Yeah. And you automatically just did a whole entire, um, you just sorted them and keep coded them by the model type just because okay, so why if, it's, if a Porsche is so difficult, why we don't try to do that to see how you do it? You master that. So it would be great for us to see how you do this because it's difficult. I'm, I'm happy to do it for Porsche. It's just a, a much more difficult one, but I could do it. Any other building that you want to do, I'll, I'm happy to do two more. So, okay. But you know what? I actually did Porsche. So I, I can look it up and, and, and send it to yeah. you. Andres, uh, could you do um, Bristol in uh, Brickle? Yeah, Bristol is kind of like the Bristol same Tower. thing as, as Porsche. But yeah, can, it's a little bit uh, confusing, but right, not that so, much, not, not as much as Porsche. Okay, so... Uh, or the Echo on Brickle. Let's do... I'm going to do any of that. I'll, I'll do Bristol. So what's the address of Bristol? Andres, so it's um, Brickle Heights, I got the easier. It doesn't matter. I'll do a few of them really quick. What's the address of Bristol? Somebody? 
Um, All right, never mind. I'll look it up. 2127 Brickell Avenue. 2127. All right, 2127. Oh, sorry guys, I, I forgot to share. Let me let me share the screen. I started to work without sharing the screen. All right, here we go. 2127 Brickell. Much better. Uh, Brickell Avenue. And I'm gonna do close sales. Just I'm gonna add 800 days because I'm sure they're not gonna have a lot of close sales. Results 36. So in 800 days, they've had five closings. So it's really not a lot. But just to make it even more interesting, let's add 1200 days. Okay. Wow. Still only did I, oh no, no, no. I have to add more columns here. Sorry. There we go. Now we have something to work with. All right. So I'm going to go into my format that I personally like. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit select all and I'm going to download to Excel export. Export it's downloading. Here we go. So here we have Bristol. I'm gonna click on the top left. I'm gonna double click between the A and B. I'm gonna hit justify, justify, double check they're all Bristol Tower. I am going to double click, make this all Bristol. And then I'll start deleting stuff that I don't want. I don't need the address. I don't need this information. I just need a square footage living area. I don't need original price. I am going to take the data from here, from the sold units, copy, and I'm gonna move it under and replace the list price by the sold price. And then I'm gonna delete that sold column altogether. And now I'm gonna call this header list and sold prices. There are your days on the market and I'm gonna delete all the, the agent information. Data view freeze plane so that everything sticks when I scroll left and right. I really don't need, sometimes you might want to leave the days on the market for somebody, you know? So let's, on this particular case, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave the days on the market just so you could have that data. And now I'm going to beautify it by adding some color to it. So now we have active building name, Unit number, bed, bath, half bath, square footage, so on and so forth. There's one unit here that's missing the square footage. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna guess that 1406 and 1606 are the same square footage. So I'm gonna copy that data from one to the other. And let me give you, let me give you something else for fun that you could do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw something in here uh, real quick. So if you wanted to get the square footage price for everything, I hit sum hit the, the unit price divided by the square footage price. And it's gonna do the formula for me. If I double click and slide down, see the one that was missing the square footage? Now I got the price per square foot on that one. But here's a cool thing that you could do also for your client. Let's say in this situation, you wanted to find out what the average price per square foot is of the available units. There's two ways of doing this. One way is I am going to I didn't mean to delete, hold on. So I'm going to insert a line, insert a line. All right, so there is 
One way of doing it, which is clicking under the average, the price per square feet, and then clicking on sum and hitting on average. And if I hit enter, it's gonna tell me that the average price per square foot of everything available is 583.03. Now, I actually like to do this. I like to do the sum of everything available. And then I like to do the sum of all the square footages. And then I do sum of that cell divided by the total square footages. And it tells me that the average price per square foot of everything that's available is 593.28. This is cool data to have, right? Because you could say, hey, listen, it's, it's important to know what the average price per square foot is in a building and what the average price per square foot is that's sold in a building. But in, in this particular situation, it's a little skewed off by a couple of units that are really high in comparison to the rest of the units. Like for instance, these two 3101 and 3302 that, are, that have $700 a square foot uh, price per square foot. Notice you have this unit, it's even on the market for a thousand days. So if you wanted to take, delete those two units on the top, and I delete them. Notice how the price per square foot now changed to 570 as an average of the building. So, and then you can do the same thing for obviously for the sold data. If I, if I do the sum of the sold data and I do average, I can say the average price per square foot sold on those last three years is 554. And then you can sort it by however you want to get more detailed data. All right, so I'm gonna, Go back to the original task. I'm going to undo, 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 undo all this stuff. All right. So back to where we were. So now I'm going to color coordinate. I'm going to color coordinate all the actives. And I'm going to make the actives this yellow. And I'm going to do close sales. I'm going to do them in green. And I'll even bold it and I'll take pending and we'll put it in another color. All right. So now we have all the information here. Oh wait, I forgot to do one thing. I have to add the line. Very important line equals right open parentheses, click on the unit that you want, comma two, close parentheses. And it gave it to me. Now I'm gonna click here and slide this all the way down. How amazing, this person listed a unit and didn't even put a unit number. Can you believe that? On the MLS, listed, sold, and they didn't even put a unit number. Amazing. All right, let's delete that one. And I am going to recolor coordinate that so it matches the green. and bold it, wrong green. All right, and this pink one. All right, so now we have it all color coordinated and we have all the lines. Now all I have to do is sort it properly. So I'm gonna hit data, sort by header, and then I'm gonna pick the line first, and then I'm gonna do a secondary sort by the unit number and I'm gonna do from largest to smallest. Again, because I just like to see the units that are on top, on top, and the units that are lower floors and the lower floors. View, I'm gonna take off the grid lines because I don't like them. And let me make this a little bit bigger. And now we have, guys, here's the Bristol. And I'm gonna take the 01 line and I'm gonna box it in. The 02 line. Box it in. Take the 03 line and box it in. So on and so forth. So as you do, you could see now that if somebody wants to make an offer on an O2 line, again, you got to go through the data and look at it, right? But in this particular situation, for instance, 3402 sold 
for 2,035,000 and 3302 is on the market for 2,070,000. But for some reason, it's been on the market for 571 days. Uh, 2702 sold for 1.8. I mean, yeah, 2002 sold for 1.8. 2702 is on the market for 1.825. Now, 2002 sold for 1.89 in January of 2017. So again, this gives you a very good picture of per line and per building. But again, you always have to go in and see what does that building look like in comparison to, I mean, what does that unit in particular that sold looks like in comparison to the unit that's on the market and do a more detailed. But this is the best way to analyze a building in my opinion, you know, from 30,000 feet in the air and get a perspective of, of what that building is doing, how many units are on the market, how easy is it selling, so on and so forth. So I'm back here. Questions, unmute your, your mic if you have a question. Andres. Yes. Puedes mostrarme la, la, eh, What's la up, columna. buddy? First of all, I just want to say eh, hi. Hi, buddy. buddy. <laughs> How you doing? Eh, eh, me puedes mostrar eh, cómo hiciste la fórmula de la línea, solamente que, que me distraje cuando la hiciste. Yes, I will. Thank As you. a matter of fact, I actually wrote it down because I knew somebody was going to ask me that. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> um, I'm going to share the screen again so you could um, see this. Hold on a second. Can you just type it in the chat just so it's- I, I will. You know what? I'll do it right now. Thank Good you. idea. I think Beatriz uh, beat you to it and posted it up. Oh, there you go. Oh, hold on a second. Oh. Sorry. There I did. I just posted it yeah. in the chat. There it is. Did that answer your- Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. So by the way, guys, it's not, it's not it, what I posted in the chat, right? You have to, I, I click equal, right? Open parentheses, then I click on the cell that's next to it, comma, two, close parentheses. So it's not 04. It just happened to be that that was the one in that- uh, The line, uh -huh. the, right? the one that you choose. Everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Julio, thank you for the correction there. Any other question? Anyone, anyone, Bueller, anyone? Would you please add the full plan again? I like Can the I master need... key plan. You want to see it? Yeah, how you did it the last time. Can Which you one? add like a master key plan for Bristol below the Excel sheet, please? Oh, okay. So in, in that situation, I would just Google um, Bristol. I'm going to do it right now. Bristol. Uh, Can you share plan? your? I'll, I'll do it right now. Uh, let Thank me see you. first. If somebody has it, uh, Bristol, hold on a second. Let me make sure. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so here I basically just went to Google and Googled Bristol Miami site plan. And you'll see here a whole bunch of different site plans here. And basically you could just open any of them, that, the one that you like the most and the one that's the clearest and download it basically to your computer and then just click on when you're back when you download it whatever it is that you did you click on insert um, and once you click on insert go to picture and click from your file and then click on your desktop or wherever you put it and once you select that um that unit that image just hit Hit it and insert it, and that's basically all you need to do. Hello, do you hear me? Yeah, I'm trying to take off my share. Go ahead. Okay, so I don't know how to what? turn the camera here. So when when we're doing uh, like um, to the comparables, because I'm going to give the price to the subject property, and I have to add or delete. Uh, actually uh, add or subtract a price per floor how do you calculate the price per floor depending on the price of the unit for example five thousand dollars per floor or ten thousand dollars per floor or twenty thousand dollars per floor is so, depending it's like a, it's like proportional to the price of the unit 
No, it, it, it's not. And, and it's a very good question. So um, if, if your comps were like that, in other words, if you went to a building and the comps were like that, you could, you could then say that that's what it is, X per floor, right? So when, when developers price out a building, they'll typically do, let's say when they're doing the first phase of a building, they'll do 3,000 per floor or 5,000 per floor or 15,000 per floor. If you're talking about much higher price range uh, apartments. And then you have situations where you have a building where, let's say you have a neighboring building that's 20 floors high and your building is 40 floors high. So that unit that faces that neighboring building is gonna probably go up a certain amount per floor up to the 20th floor of that unit. And then when it gets to the 21st floor, it has a better view than the 20th floor because it goes right over the building next door, but you still see like the AC units. If you go two floors higher, it gets a little bit better. Three floors higher, you know, it's even better. So the unit that's floor 25, it's gonna have a drastic difference in price in unit 20 because 20 looks into the unit next door and 25 has a clear view. So it's not an exact formula. And, and also you have to also think about, again, if one unit has what somebody did, you know, a million dollars in build out, depending on the, you know, the caliber of the building and somebody else did $500,000 in build out, you also can't price it 3000 or $5,000 per floor because it also depends on what that person did to the unit, right? So it has to be that, you know, both units are very similar, both view corridors are very similar. And then you could say, hey, between what sold the comparables of what sold other units, in that situation, in that building, in that line, it happens to be $5,000 a floor. And then you could come up to that assumption, but you can't just come up to that assumption unless you did all the other stuff. Yes, but if, I, if I'm comparing, for example, let's do a, that, that's a adjustment on the, on the appraisal or on the CMA, right? So if I'm comparing in the same building, the same line, for example, I go to the Trump Towers. The Trump Towers, all five line is looking west. And I, and I go and I see, because I'm going to send an offer for one of my clients, and I see that unit 2005 is the same finishes, you know, crystal floors, whatever is the same view. And then the other one is in the 30th floor. But if, if I give like, for example, five thousand so dollars, the answer, the answer is that I would, I would building, find out. I would find out what the comps in, in are. The build, okay. The, you know what? Okay. What did fifteen sell for? What did six, seventeen sell for? What did thirty sell for? And then if those units are, happen to be also the same comp, then I could adjust up and down from there. But I, yeah, I, okay. you, I can't give you a number. It's there. There's no number that I could give you for any building. It's it's very specific to the building. Yeah, it's a specific, I think, for the price of the unit, like how exactly. much is the price of the unit also. But, okay. but, okay, that, but in that line, you got you to gotta have three or four to come up with that assumption. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's the way I try to do it, but sometimes they're not comparable. So I have to like kind of guess in the, in, the, in, the, in the price of the building. If I'm comparing Trump Towers or I'm comparing, I don't know, a $300,000 uh, uh, like Milecento, so Milecento per floor is going to be less than in Trump Towers. Trump Towers is going to be less than in Porn Airports, you know? So, so, so that's, that's the problem sometimes that you don't get it because the prices are not that, uh, and, that and in, 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 in a building like Milecento, there's not a lot of difference in view corridor either. And some of the buildings have a big difference in view corridor. You know, if you're looking at Trump Tower and you're looking on the, on the west side and there's a big difference between five and 20, right? Because then you could see bay you could see the city skyline you know so it doesn't always end up being exactly the same does somebody have another question i hope that answered your question yeah good thank you andres how far do you go when if you're analyzing the tower building to see like a book deal or anything how far do you go back in time to analyze pricing or or, or close it depends how much data i have so if i if i'm doing a building so Right. If I'm doing a building and one year gives me enough data, then I don't do it. But I might do three years anyway, because just for curiosity, I want to know what the prices change from three years to two years to one year. So I'll do it. And if it's not relevant, I'll take it out. And if it's relevant, I'll leave it on. So, but I, I want to know the data first. So I, everybody has all the information, it's just how you sort it. I don't want somebody to say, hey, but this unit sold for this amount three years ago. I want to know that. I, I want to have all the information possible. Carbon pass a seller. Development sales. Sorry. Is that a sales call? Does somebody have another question? Anyone unmute your phone if you have a, a question. Unmute the, uh, the app. I do. Go ahead. 
at what time you go to another building because in that uh, sample that you just did you with bristol you went 800 year, years and months or days i'm sorry 800 days uh, before but in order to get a real comp well and, and correct me if i'm wrong we need at least three comps three sales comps at least right so if you don't find that three comps in that building when back in time you start changing from no more time before but another building right so you and can this and right and, and this exercise that i'm going over for you right now is not of how to do a comp analysis on basically every neighboring building this is just for you to analyze one specific building and and obviously especially for instance on, on a brand new construction building like a flat iron you don't have a comp right flat iron is doing their closings right now and uh, and they have a, a lot of units on the market just like any building that's just finished starting doing their closings you're going to see a lot of units on the market and it's hard to do a comparable because the building is a unique building for the area um and and there's no comps so you you really have to analyze that particular building it's it, but the answer to your question is when do you jump ship and start comping on another building when you don't have enough data basically in that particular building but in, in those examples that I gave, you do have enough data. Does somebody have another question? Unmute your app if you have a question that you wanna speak up. Okay, well, I hope you guys found hi. this. Hi, yeah, Andres. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Yvonne, Yvonne Yaro from, from Real Estate Salesforce. Um, I've got a question about- George is a, George is a big friend. Yeah. We're fraternity brothers. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you a question just because um, I have a particular unit at Gran Paraiso um, in, in Edgewater, and my client purchased that unit off of new sales development based off of what it is today. There's been about um, like basically trying to advise the client when would be the right time to sell the unit because they, they purchased it at premium and that whole building dipped about 20 percent right after so how would you pose variables of, of what's the best outcome for them what what's a good timeline for them to you know you know one of the things that i love about doing this exercise for a client is that um everything is there and it's and, and it's not your fault the you know what's going on or what the data is showing right just like it's not our fault what's happening with this whole entire situation that we're going through all you could do as being a very good professional is providing the data um, in a very clear concise manner and when you do the comps if it's there's not a lot of comps it doesn't matter you could send it on an mls link and whatnot but when you want to analyze a whole entire building like you might want to do for this particular client and you show them everything that's on the market for sale you know, they're going to see it and they're going to be like, you know what, it's probably not the right time for me to sell. And especially if people bought earlier than him, if people bought a year or two years earlier than him, they're going to have a lot more cushion and those units are going to go first. And you're just going to have to sit out and wait and for those units to sell first and for your client to sell afterwards, unless he wants to lose a substantial amount of money. So the best scenario is to do this same exact comp study that I just did for uh, sales, do the same thing for rentals and in that particular building and show him what's on the market for rent and what's rented what the prices uh, are that that rented for so you could say hey listen you might want to sit it out and, and wait and if you do this is what's currently on the market for rent and this is what currently has rented and show him that same exact analysis yeah. and, and 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 by the way it's not your fault um you know of what what's ha happened in the market but but what you do want to do is is be very um, transparent and uh, and and show them exactly what's going on. Right. I, I mean, I'm just picking picking up the slack because whoever sold it to them said that they could rent it for seven thousand, and that wasn't the case. So. Right. So I, again, that's 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 the kind of stuff <laughs> that happens when people don't show real data, right? And and you're. But that's a risk still, risk from new development. It's, it's never good. All you could do, if you want to be real with your client, especially, you know, on these pre-construction situations, I, I never, I would never tell a client two things. You're going to be able to sell your unit for X 
or you're going to probably be able to rent out your, your unit for X. If you cannot back it up with data, don't say it. Do not say it. All you got to do is say, hey, listen, I can show you the comps. This is what buildings to this caliber are renting in this area. This is what they are. And this is what buildings of this caliber are selling this area. There's some situations where there's a new building and the caliber of building that's being built is a lot higher than all the other buildings in the area. So then all you can do is say, hey, listen, the best building in this area is renting for this. So you can make your own assumption as to what you think we're going to be able to rent this unit for. I could take a guess, but I don't have a crystal ball. I hope that answered your question. All right. Somebody else have a question? Yeah, Andres, thank you very much for your for your class. Uh, I think that my business now, it's in another level based on that information. Thank However, you. Uh, would you say that I, I normally don't work in condos, um, but I know my way around them. Right. I mostly do single homes. Would you be um, inclined to say that I could use the same data to analyze subdivisions and stuff in, 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 in that area? Or you would yes add... Yes and no. I, I would say that yes and no. Be, uh, because the reason why I'm saying yes and no is that... Um, Houses differ a lot more than, than, than condos and you can't do the same task of I'm going to sort by line. I'm going to sort by, you know, you could, you could definitely do that analysis. And by the way, when I, when I uh, do house analysis, I like to also go to the MLS and go to the map section and screenshot whatever it is that I'm focused on so I can show that and add that to my presentation as well. Right. And, and people could see it because when you screenshot that, you could see what is on the market for sale, what's on the market that's sold. Right. And that's also very helpful for people to see. It's all about creating a visual. I'm a very visual person. So I like to see things. I like to see things on a map. I like to see things color coordinated. I like to see things in Excel. And by the way, if you do this exercise, the cool thing about it is that I could screenshot my Excel chart and send it to somebody via WhatsApp. Right. Or I could send them the whole entire Excel via WhatsApp, or I could send it to them via email. And some people like to play with the Excel and do their own uh, analysis with it. And you're giving them a tool for them to play with it. Or you could just, if somebody's not Excel savvy or they don't want to play with Excel, you could do a screenshot or you could print to PDF and send them a PDF file, whatever it is. But when you do this, you're, you're definitely taking it to another level. And I tell you that I, I, I don't know another realtor that does this exercise that I do, unless it's somebody who I've taught in the past. But uh, maybe there is, but I don't, I don't know of anybody else that does this. Andres, one of the, the things when you showed this to me a few months ago, one of the things that-, that Hence, you're I, one of the examples. Yes. Um, one, one of the cool things that I liked was that we were sitting right next to each other, right? And you were doing the comps of the building and you did, you screenshot it, send it to my, send it to my screen. And I was able to see has a client, right? Quote unquote, has a client able to see exactly what you're seeing, but also explaining it to me. So this is not just for you guys as agents to do the comps for yourselves to then let the, the client know what's going on. This is for you guys to be able to grab it and share it and explain it to them at the same time that you're viewing it so that everybody's on the same page and they don't miss the information or communication of what's going on within that building. So thank you very much for saying that. And uh, Andreina, um, for those who don't know her and you don't follow her on, um, on IG, I recommend that you follow her on Instagram because she gives a lot of amazing information. She's a great voice for real estate agents in South Florida. Thank and you. she, um, and she gives us a lot of great videos and whatnot to the community. So if you post your Instagram on the chat, I think that people will enjoy following you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anybody else have any questions? Anyone? Cool. All right, guys. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will uh, share with whoever wants to send me an email or uh, a message and I'll share this with you. And if you want me to go over it with you another time, I'm happy to, to help out and do it again with you one-on-one -on -one or whatnot through one of these calls. If you get into trouble, I'm here to help you. 
I, I'm just trying to help out uh, our community in general in this business. We all have to stick together and help out each other. And anything I could do to do that, uh, I'm happy to. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Andres. No Thank you, Andres. Andres, you're Great awesome. Job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Andres. Andres. Thank you so much. Okay, Andres. Un abrazo. What a great takeover, right, of the mastermind? That was awesome. Yeah. Let me see this. Stop recording.